troops into Detroit for an intra-division battle Thanksgiving Day. On the Packers' third play from scrimmage, number 31, fullback Gary Ellis encountered scant resistance on a tackle-free 40-yard romp around left end. Better believe that front four will turn it loose. And we come with the drop play up the middle. Gary Ellis. Well, not now. Oh, not by not now. Gary Ellis. Gary Ellis in a sprint for the end zone. <laughs> he loses it at the seventh. And the man that ran him down, Daryl Green, the great sprinter from Texas A&I. And when he ran Tony Dorsett down earlier this year in a game, he proved to all the football players in America that he can run anybody down <laughs> in the NFL. Red in the needle, isn't it? That's Monty Coleman. It's right there behind him. He had him pretty well covered, but look at Green take off. Here's where you got to go in your zigzag. Zag. Zig. He zigged when he should have zagged. Against the Browns, their ground game controlled the tempo when number 33 rookie Jesse Clark cleared the way for Gary Ellis. Ellis's 25-yard sprint iced a 35-21 win. Last Sunday, number 31, Gary Ellis's torrid first-half performance against the Chicago Bears helped the Packers avoid the deep freeze of playoff elimination. Ellis's 50-yard reception was the big play in a drive that culminated in a Lynn Dickey scoring pass. He goes straight back in the pocket. Dickey looks. He wants to throw deep. The loss and he already will never get out of bounds. Now he's got a touchdown. It's going to work. It worked. <laughs> James Lofton caught it and Gary Ellis took it in, and the Packers had forced an overtime period retaliated with their own unorthodox receiving methods. But in this contest, the difference was defense, as quarterbacks were grasped more firmly than the passes they threw. Lambeau Field seemed to be a frostbitten road show for the Houston Oilers. Away from the temperature-controlled environs of the Astrodome, the Oilers' trip to Green Bay's Nordic climbs made their normally solid defense at first appear brittle. And again on first down. He's got him. Wide open. Down the sidelines, Gary Ellis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's out of bounds at the seven yard line. It'll be first down, goal to go. At the 24 yard line. First and 10, and here comes Gary Ellis. Oh, yeah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. He cut up right at the right time. He exploded right <laughs> up the middle of the field, and they got it all going right now. And his 71-yard run from scrimmage set up Green Bay's first touchdown. Ellis rushed for 141 yards and one score as the pack staged one of their patented offensive fireworks shows, netting over 500 yards in total offense in the game. When Dickey left the game with an injury, backup David Whitehurst picked up the slack. Whitehurst threw for nearly 250 yards, including a touchdown to Jerry Ellis, number 31. The 69-yard touchdown reception was one of two he received from Lynn Dickey to put the pack ahead by five in the fourth quarter. But the brilliance of the rookie Ellis was negated by Packer mistakes. He seems sort of falling back there. He's five yards off the ball before he's blocked. It's a beautiful cut by Gary, and he just turns... On the afterburners. That's a classic look at cutting against the grain and watching the defensive players overrun it. Gary Ellis. The Packers with a lot of weapons. They scored initially on this burst by Gary Ellis. The thing I like about this play, Brent, is you see how the offensive line opened. Apparently they're now healthy. Doing well. Gary Ellis has made a lot of big plays tonight. None bigger than the one he just pulled off with Lynn Dickey. Some rock'em, sock'em football now. These guys are fired up. There you go, Gary.